Yeah, you can't do that, boy. You do that, it's two in the head, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back with another drunk reaction, and today I'm drinking fireballs I offer them. It's time for some more Better Call Saul. Can't wait to find out what kind of shenanigans... <laughs> well, we know what kind of shenanigans Jimmy's up to. I want to know what kind of counter shenanigans Chuck's going to be up to. Because he ain't going to be happy about this shit, boy. This is fantastic. What a great way to get it back, man. Had me fooled. You know, they, like like I was saying in the, the recap, like the post-episode reaction last time. We were so fucking worried. Like, the whole episode, they're fucking telling us, you know, Jimmy's broke, Jimmy's broke, Jimmy's broke, Jimmy needs money, Jimmy needs money, Jimmy needs money, he's broke, he's broke, he's broke. Just classic fucking grifting. Like, these writers are grifters. You know, these writers are scam artists. Think about that. You know how Jimmy's a scam artist and a grifter? Like, keep me thinking about this, and then bam, they hit you with this. You know that? The writers are the same way. They're just like Jimmy. They are grifters and scammers. The best writers are. This kind of storytelling, anyway. Like, just never fucking expected it. Because we were so focused on, on his money troubles. The entire fucking episode was built around that. But the other thing, like, when you had that much struggle, you're going to want to get back at the person who did it. And that, so it, so it wasn't even like, you know, like Game of Thrones would have a fucking shock that you're not expecting. But it wasn't earned. There wasn't anything that set it up. The setup was here the whole time. He was fucking pissed. You know? We were thinking he was there begging for money, which he was never going to get. When actually, he's just pissed, and so he came in for retribution because he knew they weren't going to fucking help him. So, man, that dude, like, that was excellent. That was fantastic. And really going to see what's up with Nacho, you know? Like, I'm pretty sure Nacho is the one that causes uh, the stroke. Like, of course, they wasn't think that. Like, I was just saying, they're fucking scam artists. They keep us thinking about this. We ain't thinking about this, right? So, this is Nacho. I think it's going to be this. My prediction is Nacho does not cause a stroke. It's all fucking scam. It's going to be with this that we not we don't see coming. You know? So, yeah, let's go ahead and get it. I can't wait to see what's up. Back there doing the books. Yeah, whatever. I remember when we used to ditch forth from the back door to tell your folks it was a free period. He doesn't want to go down memory lane, motherfucker. two. Still, Does he look like he wants to go down memory lane? Hey, how'd you get up there when you were a kid? A couple of milk crates, you know? I bet that was precarious when he was a kid on muscle milk crates. You know, be like mm. Yeah, this is foreshadowing him getting back in the grifting game. Because he's 100% uh, getting back in the grifting game. He's got to do something for this year. So uh, after about a week, he starts talking about giving his father Mahoney for the poor box, so I make it disappear. And after that, every day after school, I'm checking the till, you know, something catches my eye, stick it in the box, put it up there for good luck. <clears throat> so the rest so of those coins are shit, huh? It's a crying shame they lost this place. They never should have bought it in the first place. My dad didn't have it in him. What do you mean? You know, con artists, they see everybody else as suckers and losers. Everybody else. You're either a con artist or you're a sheep. You know, they're predators, you know? I'm not making a value judgment here. I'm just saying that's how they see the world. That's how Jimmy sees the world. This little stretch of road gets a lot of work from the show. <laughs> That fits their routine. You know how they always show him fail at first. So just so we can know how hard he's working. Every time they do one of these things with him, he fails the first time. Or probably multiple times. When he was uh, stripping the car. When he was trying to get the fucking shoes over the power line. And now here, like when he's trying to find the metal box, right? The, the point they're making here is this dude is putting in the hours he's putting in the fucking work, boy. Most of the people on this show are hard workers. That's something they all have in common. Most of the major players like Chuck, Mike, Jimmy, Kim, probably Nacho. I don't know if we've seen enough to fully determine that, but like he seems to be a hard worker. They put in that extra effort. Oh, shit. Really? Damn. 
Or is that what he's looking for? I thought he's looking for the metal box where they put yeah, the guns. Chicago police. Yeah, I was out on your property this afternoon. Oh, he's trying to find the driver. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. This shit's still fucking with him. I literally thought he was looking for the metal box. How do you see your next steps? Well, clearly with this kind of improvement, it won't be long before I'm back to work full time with no accommodations. And then soon after, I want to get back into court. I haven't argued a case in almost three years. So that's next. It's good and to have goals, I suppose. Back on. Sorry about your uh, malpractice oh, insurance. This house to be full of me uncomfortable. Probably almost a nine. <clears throat> what made it so important to talk to me that night? I had an incident. Very public. I'm surprised incident. this didn't come up in the very first meeting. That's usually what the... I've had therapy. Like, if you've uh, seen my Sopranos reactions, you know this. The very first thing they ever talk to you about is, before even what's your life story, why did you come in here? The very first thing. Yeah, that there was a battery. A fully charged battery. Almost next to my skin for the better part of two hours. And I felt nothing. He's a scientific man. He knows what that means. He's got a hard head, but, you know... He was convinced it was physical. This proved to him it wasn't. A lot of people just, they can't do that. They can't make this transition. They would have rejected that evidence. So I, I'm impressed. Like, I'm impressed Like that Chuck is that open to this, right? Like, he's an asshole. I hate him. But I do respect and I love the fact that he's open to this. 90% of people would not be. Not real. Then what have I done? Exactly. You know? Like this is, most people just reject that. They would not be able to face what he's facing here. You know? Remind me how much is all this going to cost? Exactly what we talked about the other day. The first one. This guy is really is. Like, I hate people that change, change the deal on the day. You know? Of course, I don't be, like, seven fudging or tricking motherfuckers or being loose with the truth like he is. So I get yeah, that. But this still. Just quote okay, but why do we need seven new ones exactly. in the first place? Yeah. What, what's to stop us? It's the real and intellectual property of Saul Goodman Productions. <laughs> Um, That's a good point. So, I mean, it's our face, it's our store, and it's my commercial. And you can't run it without my permission. I mean, he's got okay. a point. Okay. But you're not going to pay you $6,500 for something that we can do ourselves. You got it? Seriously. Seriously. I mean, I get their point, too. You know? I can see both sides of this. <laughs> you should have at least tried to get that 450 man. I get it. I understand. I hear where he's coming from. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is a rough way to make a living, boy. Or he's just trying to break even, literally. Goodbye. Go. Sorry about Sorry about that. Drumstick, it was laying loose in the aisle. Somebody call an ambulance. No, nope, you don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> Look. I'm not endorsing this, but you gotta admit it's hilarious. <laughs> He's a desperate man. What can you say? Now, I can't make heads or tails of it. I mean, can't he? His lawyer was a local guy completely over his head. So Billy's fired the guy, but now he doesn't know whether to shit or wind his watch. <laughs> well, she can't take on any more extra work. Yeah. Goddamn. I told him. Well, sure, but I gotta hey take it. I thought I saw some familiar faces. Howard. Kim, sit. I insist. Kevin. Howard. He's not an asshole. Always I hated friend. Howard because Jimmy hated Howard him, but that, just because Jimmy Thank hated him doesn't mean we have to hate him. All's well with the expansion? I saw you got For the most part, I like Howard. Your original time. Seems like just yesterday she was logging hours in doc review. <laughs> you going to bring that up, really? Always a pleasure to see one of our protégés. I was just talking good about you, Howard. Why are you going to twist the knife like that, asshole? Well, I'll get out of your hair. Best of luck to all of you. I mean, he's did a little yeah, nitrous, but still, he forgave her debt to the to the company. He didn't have to do that. He he didn't have to do it. Oh, she's gonna pay him. I was literally just talking I about the this. salmon here and the fillet. If you like sea scallops, they're fantastic. I was yeah. literally just uh, uh, hello, yeah. Howard. Sit. I insist. Sorry to interrupt. I just needed to give Howard something. Yeah, she's gonna pay him. For Lauren, good to see you again, Kim. This is Jack Sweet, our new CEO. Oh, hello. Pleasure. Nice to see you too, Henry. Nick. Marie Austin. Good to <laughs> nice to meet $14, you. $14,000. Good to see all of you. Oh, good. Thanks again, Kim. 
I'll let Billy know you'll be calling, and we'll talk tea time soon. Sounds good. All See right. you soon, Tim. Bye. Tea time. Does she play golf? That would actually surprise me. Just because I've never seen her play golf. Unless they mean tea like the British tea, you know. What the hell is this? So I take you out of the mail, put you through law school, mentor you, and then when you leave and stab me in the back, that's my fault. I'm not cashing this. <laughs> Kim, your debt is forgiven. But anything else, that's on you. <laughs> All Jimmy and I did was show the situation for what it is. And if you are hiding that from your clients, well, Howard, that's on you. You know, an antagonist doesn't mean a villain. Howard's an antagonist. I just I see where he's coming from. I can see his side to it. I could as a writer, I could put myself in this position. All things considered, he hasn't done anything nefarious or evil, you know? Unlike Chuck. So I continue to like Howard is my point. <laughs> so now we're seeing evidence that Nacho has a good work ethic ethic too. I was just talking about that. He's putting in the hours. Yeah, I can't tell you how much I hated this motherfucker on Orphan Black. Just goes to show you how good of an actor he is. Because I love him on this show. Does he have mirrors set up? He should. He have mirrors so he can see like where other people would be seeing, what they would be seeing. Yeah, you can't do that, boy. You do that, it's two in the head, man. <laughs> but for putting in the hours, boy. Here's the thing, like, um, even if you get it right in practice, doesn't mean you're going to get it right on the, uh, get it right when you actually do it. You know, Penn from uh, Penn and Teller, when they did that infamous Saturday Night Live sketch where they were upside down and they were doing uh, all this shit to make it look like they could make things levitate because they were actually upside down and gravity was pulling it away from like with cards to make it look like it was levitating. Um, there was one particular handoff that he had to do because they had to make it look like they were right side up the whole time until the end of the up, uh, the end of the sketch when they, they pulled back to reveal what was really going on. There's one handoff, one really complicated maneuver because every movement, remember, it had to be, you had to let gravity take effect, but you can't sh show the audience that gravity is real, like gravity's like taking effect, right? There's one handoff he kept trying to do, and he practiced it all fucking week, and every time he failed. Every fucking time, every single rehearsal he failed. They get to the time, they get to the time where it's going to air, he tries it one last time, it fails. But when the fucking camera's on him, he performed that thing flawlessly flawlessly the one time when he was um, under the hot lights of the camera soy milk i'm um, uh, don't don't get me wrong chuck's pizza. doing his little shopping thing he's all stressed out fuck chuck <clears throat> you know what i'm saying i'm paying attention but um that just goes to show you like that's the inverse of what i was talking about you could get it right in practice every fucking time yeah this is the worst aisle by the way because you got all the lights all the fucking refrigerators this is the worst fucking aisle you could possibly walk down Oh, Jesus, dude. Like I said before, he's brave. I'll give him that. This is brave. This is really fucking brave, man. Um, But if you can practice every time, it may not work in the actual when it's game time, right? Just like with football, they can practice and play 20 times. It doesn't work. They tried the game, it works. Or the reverse, right? So I'm just saying, this thing Nacho's doing, practice, definitely practice. But, man, even after I did it flawlessly, I would still be practicing. <laughs> Thank you.